Hello friends, this video on wind storms and cyclones part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the structure of cyclone. So there are a few terminologies associated with a cyclone. So here the picture which uh, is being shown on the screen is the top view of a cyclone where you have the at the center the low pressure area and then you have these um, winds which are revolving I mean which are moving like this which are like rotating. So the first important structure of the cyclone is the eye. I is the term given to the center of the cyclone and as I have mentioned it is the low pressure core. So this is I. So you see the center of the cyclone. It is the area of sinking air. Sinking air means all the air tends to come here because air tends to move from region of higher pressure towards lower pressure. So this is the place where all the air tends to sink. That is called. That is why it is called area of sinking air. Now in this region there is very little or no wind. So when you talk about the extreme center, so exactly at the center even though it is a low pressure area, so immediately at the center you really do not see any wind. There is a clear sky, calm sky, so no clouds, nothing is seen at exactly the center. And the diameter range of the center is approximately, it ranges from 10 kilometers to 100 kilometers. So you see the uh, diameter of the eye itself will give an idea about how big the cyclone is. So the bigger is the center, so more winds will be rotating about it. So more dangerous the cyclone would be. So that's the eye. So here uh, you can say that very little winds or no winds and clear sky, calm sky. So they are some of the characteristics of the eye. The next is eye wall. So the name itself defines it. So it is the wall which surrounds the eye. So the green colored structure here, that's the eye wall. So it is the band of dense clouds surrounding the eye. Maximum wind speed occurs here. So this is the place where the wind speed is at its maximum. So we, we know that maximum more wind speed or high wind speed is always accompanied by low air pressure. So that is why here high speed winds move because of which a low pressure area is created at the core. So the most violent winds occur here and the heaviest rainfall also occurs here in this part. So this part of the cyclone caused the maximum damage. So eye wall is the most dangerous part because it causes maximum damage. And why maximum damage? Because maximum rainfall here, maximum wind speed here. And then finally comes the spiral rain bands as you can see here. So the blue colored structures which are shown they are nothing but the clouds here and there. So these spiral rain bands they can extend up to thousands of kilometers from the eye. So that defines till how much the cyclone is extended. However these bands are oriented uh, in the same direction as the horizontal and also in these bands they do contain heavy rains but they are not as furious as the eye wall. So gradually as you move away from the core, so the, the speed of the wind also reduces, the rainfall is also not that heavy. So basically the power of destruction reduces as you move away from the core of the cyclone. So that's like the basic structure of cyclone. Now, one of the most popular cyclones which happened recently in India was the one in Orissa. So, if you look at the map of India, you will see that it is not that all the locations are prone to cyclone. There are certain areas which are more vulnerable to cyclone attacks and which are those areas, the areas which are present near the seashore. So, primarily the eastern ghat of the country. So if you see here, the eastern ghat of the country, it, it is immediately facing the sea. So that's why this part is very much prone to cyclone. Even the northeast portion, also this portion and a little bit of the western ghat. So mostly the eastern ghat is very much prone to cyclone. And where is Urissa located? Urissa is also located somewhere here. 
right so since it is located just near the coastal area therefore it is more prone to cyclone because when when a region is located near coastal area what happens so it is very near to the water bodies a huge water body which is an ocean so when it is nearby to the water body what happens is the presence of moisture is more right so moisture was one key factor behind thunderstorms the the chances of the concept of uh, the winds that is the monsoon winds summer winds so all those concepts are also seen more noticeably in these areas in the coastal areas correct so the lift can also be felt so all the factors which are responsible for thunderstorms to happen that happen very readily in these type of areas and since they are located very close to water bodies the chances of rainfall is also huge and therefore cyclones can happen very easily so one of the deadliest cyclone that happened in urissa was in 1999 somewhere around 18th october so that was the first cyclone during that time which had hit orissa and that time so 1999 was the year of suffering for the state orissa so one cyclone happened at around 18th october and in that cyclone the wind speed was around 200 km per hour however the most unfortunate part was that another cyclone again had hit orissa a couple of days later so some 10 days later another cyclone had hit orissa and that time the speed was almost 260 km per hour so now the wind speed was even more than before so when you have cyclones with more wind speeds so the destruction would be all the more so when cyclone takes place now since the wind speed goes so high what happens is the water waves are also very high because these are the coastal areas located on the sea shore so the water waves also go very high with the wind speed and these high water waves can result in floods so these water waves actually uh, spoil so many houses so many people become homeless so many buildings and roads and everything get damaged because of those high waves in fact in urissa itself more almost 50000 houses were broken lakhs and lakhs of people were homeless so a huge loss was incurred in urissa so that is one example of a cyclone so now i hope you understand what exactly is a cyclone and why does it occur and why are certain areas more prone to cyclone than other areas so as i was telling that the east coastline is more prone to cyclones now when we say more prone so it is in terms of both frequency of cyclones as well as intensity so when i say frequency of cyclone that means how many times cyclones cyclone has occurred in that region that is what is frequency is and when we talk about the intensity of a cyclone it means how strong the cyclone was how strong the wind speeds were so that defines the intensity so in terms of both frequency as well as intensity the east coast line of india is very much prone to cyclone and that that we can very much see how it happened in orissa like two consecutive cyclones in the same month with uh, tremendous wind speeds now this cyclone is known by different names in different parts of the world like in india we call it cyclone but in japan they use the term typhoon so in japan they call it as typhoon in america they call it as hurricane so these are like different terms which are used more or less for the same thing so similar to cyclone these are also uh, uh, natural phenomenon which are capable of causing huge disasters now some of the harmful effects of a cyclone are loss of life obviously when there is um, such high speed winds flowing so what happens is high waves in the water come up and these high waves can result in floods they can spoil they can kill a lot of people lot of animals Uh, loss of property so many buildings get damaged uh, houses are ruined so so many people turn homeless buildings bridges roadways everything gets spoiled so when the roadways get spoiled the entire transportation system gets affected so when the wires and the cables get destroyed the entire communication system gets affected so that means it causes huge damage to property 
no electricity supply as i said so when everything goes under water so what supply will you have for electricity so there is no electricity supply there is no transportation there is an adverse effect on the agriculture as well because as i was as i was telling that for agriculture we need rain so the farmers always pray that okay rainfall should happen but when there is too much of water like this what happens is the crops get destroyed because as we all know that crops need water the soil needs water but it needs it at a in a certain at a certain level at a certain quantity now when there is too much of water logging happening in a field then all the crops tend to get destroyed that is one thing secondly when flood occurs the soil fertility is also adversely affected the soil fertility is reduced and therefore even after the cyclone is gone the fertility of the soil is also gone therefore the agriculture gets affected even for the future months or future years to come thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again